Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video that I did a question about on the channel asking if you, my viewers and subscribers, wanted it. And the answer was yes. Now this is all about how you put Lua scripts on, onto a radio like the TX16S. Now this is the iNav Lua script, but there's also the Yapu one. We're going to talk about this as well. Now these are little programs that run on the radio that present the telemetry information that the radio is hearing back from your model in a nice kind of easy to follow dashboard. And the two that I use are Yapu. I'll put links below to all of this. Yapu is great for things like Ardu Pilot, so my Ardu plane, Ardu copters. Uh, talk to Yapu, and there's, this is the iNav script which you can put in your SD card and it'll show you all your critical information. Now, why would you want something like this on your radio? Well, you don't have to have it, it isn't absolutely necessary. But I fly a lot of models that have GPSs on, I like to return to home, and I can't arm them until the GPS is locked. Now, that kind of information is available in the goggles, but um, I like to plug the model in, have it sat for a couple of minutes and let it get that GPS lock and the radio then tells me about that. Similarly when I'm flying it'll also kind of announce uh, my battery statuses and things and also warn me if I'm uh, approaching my ceiling maximum height that I'm allowed in the area that I'm flying. So you don't need this but I've had loads of people uh, get in touch going oh I can't get this all to work and there are some gotchas so I'm going to go through those as I go through this. There's really two parts. First is how do you get the telemetry from the model to the radio and then how do you set the radio up to get this thing to work uh, because this radio similar things like the jumper T16, T18 also things like the X10S the way you put all of the information on the screen and select the Lua script that you want to, to use like that isn't uh, isn't obvious. I'm going to cover everything in the video. Again, all the stuff that I'm going to cover is uh, linked below, but I've also done videos on putting the iNav script on a regular Tyrannus radio. We're just going to concentrate more on the Radio Master to get all the details. Links below as well, time index, so if you want to jump to a specific piece, you can. Although I'd recommend if you're struggling with this, I'd start from the very beginning and go all the way through. So before we get too far into the radio side, let's start with how you get the telemetry down from your model so that when you go into the telemetry screen on the radio and you discover sensors, you have loads and loads of sensors. Because if they're not there, there's no point in putting things on your SD card and trying to configure telemetry scripts because they won't have any telemetry to show you anyway. So job one is to get it so that when you go into the telemetry screen on your radio and you look at the sensors, you have a great whacking long list like this. If you only have the basics, things like RSSI, receiver voltage, stuff like that, then there's no point going any farther. This is what it should look like if it's going to work. And the big tip with this is if you can get the list like this and you still can't get the telemetry screen, to work and to identify all these sensors then just delete all the sensors and rediscover them and that seems to be the trick that I find works the most here. So let's talk a little bit about how you actually get all that telemetry back from your flight controller. So the first way is the very very simple way. Let's assume that we are talking to a regular FreeSky receiver and it's got an S bus output that you're plugging into something like Beta Flight or iNav. The way that that would normally work is you'd normally have some kind of smart port connection into that FR Sky receiver and then you configure in Betaflight or iNav, you turn telemetry on and you turn that UART that the smart port stuff is connected to for the FreeSky telemetry smart port and everything would magically appear on the radio. Now, for those of you that watch the channel a lot, you've seen me do this in loads and loads of different builds, so that shouldn't be news to you at all. The second way to do it is to use something like F-Port uh, with free sky receivers that support F-Port. F-Port is a bi-directional uh, protocol, so not only does it send all the control inputs into the flight controller, the flight controller can send all the telemetry back. So that's a much easier way to configure it. Again, this isn't all the different versions of the ways that you can do it. These just happens to be the ones that I've played with here. The third one is how you do it for something like Crossfire. With 
Crossfire, something like Betaflight or iNav Flight, I would recommend very strongly that you connect your Crossfire receiver to your flight controller using CRSF. There's a number of reasons for that. First of all, it is, again, a bi-directional protocol. So if you have telemetry turned on, it will send the telemetry back down to the radio so you get all those sensors. And it's also a little bit quicker than SBUS2. So if you have invested in something like Crossfire, use CRSF to get the information from your receiver into your flight controller. For Ardu Pilot, there's a little bit more work to do at the moment. Uh, this is changing all the time, so be aware of that. Check the latest Ardu Pilot documentation. They may have added uh, native smart port support. Now, normal way I would do it here is with a FreeSky receiver, connect the SBUS output to the SBUS input of the flight controller that I was using, maybe a Pixel Cube, a Durandal, a Maytech flight controller, an Omnibus, if I'm trying to do it on the cheap. And then you need to select the right telemetry output that then use an extra little board again link below to all the detail on this and that will then turn that two pin telemetry into a single pin that you can then connect to the smart port input on your free sky receiver and down it comes now i use these little boards a lot i make quite a lot of them but as i said keep your eyes on the rd pilot stuff because this is changing all the time and very soon i'd expect that we wouldn't need that little ttl inverter board the other way to do it is with crossfire crossfire has mavlink support natively straight out the box so if you configure two of the pins for mavlink transmit and mavlink receive you can just connect those to any spare serial port and it will natively send the mavlink telemetry back down to the radio and then that means the yapu scripts can read and see everything again that was covered in my ardu plane matek AR wing build that I did in summer 2019. But that gets really straightforward, and this is one of the reasons why Crossfire is so cute. It does support things like Mavlink out the box. So that's how you connect it up in brief. There are lots of other ways, but those are the ones I use here. So now we've done that, let's go on to the radio end and start looking at SD cards and downloading and putting Lua scripts in the right place. So the first thing I do is pull the SD card from the bottom of the radio, just say it's messing around with things like USB cables, pop it into your computer and we're ready to go. Now the SD card is going to look something a little bit like this with all of these different directories that holds the sounds, the scripts and everything else. Now onto here we're going to have to copy the new Lua pieces for both things like uh, the iNav one and also the Yapu telemetry script. But for the moment, what we'll do is I would recommend just backing up each of these. So I would copy and save them somewhere onto your computer so that if you accidentally copy things into the wrong place and make a mess of everything, you can get back to here as well. So let's just move that out of the way for the moment. First of all, let's do it with the iNav one. So here is the iNav Lua script. Again, link below so you can get hold of this. Uh, if you're ever not sure of where things are, if you just Google iNav Lua script, you should find it. Always worthwhile reading through the features and definitely worthwhile reading through the requirements. There's a minimum requirement of OpenTX and some other information on here as well. Things like needs to include the Lua C build option and iNav at least version 1.7.3, but that's really old. Uh, we're on like 2.5, 6 I'm recording this. So those are definitely things. If any of that stuff is not where you are, then stop and take care of this first. Now, to do it, then what we need to do is download the latest release and also make sure that we're keeping an eye on the latest telemetry wiki. This will talk through how to download and how to upgrade everything. If you're going to use something like this, it's definitely worthwhile just taking a moment and just reading through it it'll save you so much heartache but what we're going to do is we will go to download latest release at the moment it's 1.7.2 as i'm recording the video so i'm going to download lua telemetry.zip and we shall pop it into somewhere that we will keep an eye on it now once that has downloaded if we open that, drag it in, in that zip file, 
there are these directories. Now, if we just drag the SD card back over, you can see here that those two directories are the same here. And actually, if you read the installation instructions, that's all we're going to do. So we're going to copy those two directories and we're going to paste into the root directory of the SD card that we've taken out the radio. We're just going to paste it in. Now that is going to overlay lots of different things. It's going to put things in the scripts directory and it's also going to put things in the widgets directory along with associated sound files and everything else as well. So there we are. Now if we look in widgets we have inav that is now going to do it which is it's come from all in here. Okay so there's one. Let's go back up to the top directory. Let's download and install Yapu. Very similar situation. Again, lots of things to read here. Just check the supported radios. Most of the stuff that's written for the Horus X10 will work okay on the Radio Master. Uh, but it's nice here that it's actually saying that uh, it will kind of work on the TS16S. So it's actually listed it as a thing. Again, loads to read. If you don't want to read all this, then we can kind of jump to downloading it. So we're going to go to the back top. The latest release versions are downloadable from the clone download button. So we'll click on that. And again, we'll put it somewhere where we'll keep it safe. So here's the contents of the zip file that we've just downloaded. Again, this is the Yapu version. Uh, if we go in here, we can see there's different versions for the Tyrannus and the Horus. The Horus is the one we're going to want. And again, we've got images, SD, and source. So there's loads of different things here. Now, I would always say, if you're not sure, just read the README file. It says copy the contents of this folder to your SD card. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy those. And again, here's the root directory of the SD card. And we're just going to paste it in. And this is why it's worthwhile backing up the SD card in case you accidentally drop them into the wrong place. It's very, very easy to do. So let me fast forward through this right to the very end. If it asks you, do you want to overwrite files? Uh, I would say yes. If you don't overwrite them, then potentially you're going to get sound files and other files from other bits. But I personally have iNav and Yapu on my radio and they seem to coexist very happily indeed. So there we have it. So now if we look in the widgets directory, we also have the Yapu as well as the iNav stuff. And it's also copied things into the sound directories as well. There's one called Yapu. And all the files we need are now on the SD card. It's that easy. So now we've got that, let's jump onto the radio, plug the SD card back in and start to configure everything ready to try it out. So the SD card is back in the radio and I've booted it up. Now, the way that you set up telemetry screens on this radio, I've kind of covered in another video. Again, link down below. But let's cover it in here and I'll go through all of the gotchas. Now, again, it's really important if we go into the model menu and then we tab across, it's really important that when you are connected to the model, you can see lots and lots of sensor types. If you can't see things like G speed and current fuel altitude, then it's important to get that bit fixed first. Now let's exit out of there. Now on a radio like this, what we have to do is press the button down here at the very left side, which is telemetry, and then it will give us the telemetry view. Now pressing the page button will allow us to go to the user interface, which lets us set how that's set up which if I just press exit, that's what kind of does the layout. This is for my mini drag. Again, bottom press, uh, we're going to set up the widgets. Now, the normal screen is how I've got it set up. So I have uh, my main image, timer and channels. But what we're going to do is we're going to create another screen and we're going to put the lower screen in it. So I'm going to tab across until I say add main view. I'm going to hit the enter key on the right hand side. And then we have the option to decide the layout that we want. And we can have lots of different choices. Now I want the first choice, which is the single screen with nothing else in it. So I'm gonna hit enter. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down and we're gonna make sure that the top bar and the sliders and trims are removed as well. If you have those 
as part of the screen it won't run so at the top I can say set up widgets and you get this weird blank screen that that um, carbon fiber thing just happens to be my background um, and then if I hit enter it now is telling me what do you want and we're going to go through the widgets so one by one I'm going to scroll through so there's all my channel widget which can be quite handy and eventually it will find the iNav and it will find So there's Yapu. So it's found Yapu first. Yapu is the one that I would use with RG Pilot, things with Mathlink control. So if you are listening to something from an RG Copter or an RG Plane, this is the one I'd use. Or if it's iNav, I would personally carry on one over, select the iNav Lua script, hit enter again, and then press uh, return, return, return to come out. Now, when we are looking at the radio, then if I uh, press the page buttons, it will page between those two. My standard screen, which has my timer and has the kind of throttle controls and shows on my trims and the position of the sliders, hit it again and it jumps into iNav. Now, a couple of key things here. Again, if you do this and it doesn't work, then the trick is to use the latest and greatest versions. Uh, I, you've seen the version of iNav and Yapu that I've downloaded that are working here. I am running the proper version of OpenTX, not the version of uh, Freedom TX or whatever it is that came with the TX16S. I'd always recommend update to the full OpenTS before you do something like this. The other common issue that I've occasionally run into is even when I think it's all working, it doesn't show all of the pieces on the screen it just basically says that there isn't any telemetry and it's warning me now because the receiver isn't powered if that's the case i'll just um, exit out of this press the page button for the model setup page across until you get into the telemetry stuff scroll down to all of that delete all of your sensors and then discover new sensors with the receiver powered up and the flight controller working, let that repopulate and it'll work. What I've seen happen is weirdly, uh, if it's already found some of the sensors from the standard receiver, uh, the IDs seem to be out of whack and it doesn't seem to, to work properly. So that would be my top tip. So again, if you want to do it, that's the process to go through. Uh, half of the battle is getting the telemetry onto the radio and then it's relatively easy to get the Lua stuff on here so that it works and my big tip is always delete and rediscover the sensors if something isn't working or if you're getting weird errors use the latest and greatest versions. So there we have it, that's how you set it up. It isn't too difficult, is it? Just have to follow the advice on the website, make sure that you have at least the latest versions that it's talking about. Again, if you're ever struggling, just update it to the latest and greatest. And also make sure that if you are setting up a new model, delete the sensors that are already on the radio and rediscover all the sensors. I found that in particular is probably my top tip because even though all the sensors are there, they appear to be kind of in the wrong order, assign the wrong IDs. And if you delete them all, rediscover them all, then the script should work. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.